Welcome to the Library Connection. I'm Tracy Thomas, Assistant Director at the B.B. Comer Library, and I want to thank you so much for being with us today. We just appreciate so much the TV station here allowing us to come to you each week and to showcase our materials and our services and to show you how we connect with great people in our community. So a big thanks to them and a big thanks to you for being with us today. Today our guest is Mitzi Smith, and Mitzi is with Ribbons of Hope. And I'm just so impressed by her because we love to see a story where something could have ended up being really sad or difficult or tragic. And we see somebody take something like that and just make something so wonderful and so positive out of it, which is what you've done with Ribbons of Hope. So I just want to thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, well, thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk about Ribbons of Hope. Well, you've done such a good job and your organization is about two years old. Yes, May of 2014 is when we started. Okay, and just to let people know a little bit of background about how Ribbons of Hope got started, we have to back up a little bit and talk about your own personal journey with cancer because that's what Ribbons of Hope is based on is helping families with a cancer diagnosis and I want you to tell your personal story for us. Okay, in 2006 I was diagnosed with breast cancer so I am now a 10-year survivor. I had to go through chemo and I had to go through radiation and through it all your bills still keep coming even though that 11 months I was not able to work but I had an AFLAC policy so, but not everyone does. So when I got through with everything, I just looked at my mom and we said, we need to give back. We need to help people get through all this. So that is when we started fundraising. And then we did it for different organizations the first few years. And then we started making an impact and we thought this money would be better spent right here in Talladega County on our own citizens. So that's when we formed Ribbons of Hope. I think your story is so great because you actually went through it. Um, sometimes you don't understand the impact that something has on somebody's life until you actually walk through it yourself. That's right. And like you said, your bills keep coming, debts keep piling up, and you got to see that firsthand. So you knew how to help people. Yes. Well, I want to know about your health now. You are well? Yes, 10 years. And that's wonderful. Permission. That's wonderful. Now, one of the things that I want to ask about for people that may not know, once you've had cancer, do you ever rest comfortable? No. <laughs> it's always in the back of your mind, is today going to be the day that you find something? Um, is the next doctor's visit going to be the visit that they tell you they found something? It's every day. You live it every day. And I think that's one of the reasons that I love what you do because you're not just helping people financially. How many calls or inquiries do you get each week from people just saying, you know, I just found out and I don't really know what to do? Yes, or my friend just got diagnosed. Can I give her your phone number? Mm -hmm. So it's constant. So you're kind of a counselor now too. Yeah, I don't need to be. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that's why I'm, I'm really impressed by what you're doing because you're not just helping financially, you're actually a support network yes. in Talladega County. So you connect people, do you connect people with doctors? Um, well, we try, usually the people by the time they get to us have already gotten their oncologist mm -hmm. and have already started some form of treatment and then we help them pay their bills while they go through that treatment. One of the things I think that it's real important to mention just because I've seen you at work, I know uh, last year we had reason to route a family to you. You don't actually give them the money. No. They just submit their bills or invoices to us and then the, we actually cut checks to their pharmacy or their oncologist or the hospital or we provide them a fuel card for their trips back and forth to their treatments. And I think that's a great way to do that because you're addressing their most immediate needs. Um, I know that we have some books at the library and I wanted to show a couple of these. And this one is called After You Hear It's Cancer. And when I saw this one, this is actually what gave me the idea to have you on as a guest because as I flipped through the book and read through it, you know, it just talks about um, the immediate shock that you're in. Yes. And that you're not really sure what decisions to make from there. and it also talks about the importance of having a good support network, the importance of understanding what your treatment plan will look like, the importance of choosing a doctor that you feel comfortable with. So I really, really liked that book and it totally made me think of you when I saw it. 
<laughs> then another book we have is called A Series of C Catastrophes, <laughs> Catastrophes and Miracles. And this one is talking about uh, this woman, she actually went through a clinical trial for immunotherapy. And there's so much out there right now as far as treatment. And when I read that, um, I didn't realize there was so much going on right now in the research world. So Ribbons of Hope has typically um, really just helped the families, but I know you've kind of delved off now into the research world. So yes. tell us a little bit about that. Um, last year we started up our um, research program and uh, childhood research for childhood cancers gets the least amount of funding. So we wanted to help in that way. So UAB Comprehensive Cancer Center had a um, program going on where they were studying neuroblastoma and we sent them $14,000 for that program for them to study that. And we will continue to send more money, but all of our research money will be more funded towards childhood cancers. I think that's wonderful. And you still, you will still reserve your certain amount to help the families. Yes. We have two aspects of ribbons, the patient program and our research program. Okay. Now, I know just from personal experience working with um, a, a foundation that's dear to my heart, I know from personal experience this doesn't happen just you no. by itself. It takes a lot of people to make this happen. Yes, volunteers. Mm -hmm. Cannot get enough volunteers. <laughs> so, well, I just, I'm, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the kinds of things that you've actually done. Um, how did you come up with your first fundraiser? Oh gosh, it's been so long I can't remember which what it was. <laughs> but we have we try to have four annual fundraisers a year, and we have a golf tournament, we have a motorcycle ride, we have an auction. We did strawberries for years, and now we're going to do cheesecakes for Valentine's Day, and we just it's constantly something. And then some of our volunteers will just say, hey. We have this idea, our church wants to do this for Ribbons of Hope, and we're like, great. And so it's something, we have something every two weeks, it seems like. Well, I see a lot of advertisements on Facebook, and I'm just real proud of you. And um, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're actually going to look at a few pictures of some of the fundraisers that you've had and talk a little bit more about those and maybe some ways that you can get involved and um, help with Ribbons of Hope. Recycling, it's nothing new, but how many of us actually do it? What's the point? Every time you toss out something that could be recycled, you're throwing away money. Recyclables are valuable, and when items like these are recycled, they are sold to businesses and made into new products. Alabama's recycling industry employs thousands of people, and more recycling equals more jobs, which equals more money put back in your local economy. See, recycling just makes sense. Let us show you how recycling works in and for Alabama. Hey y'all, Jim Green from TV47. You can now catch us on the internet. We're streaming live at TV47.TV. All of our great programming, whether it's Daybreak with Jimmy Dale, Matt Coulter, and Around the Track with Matt, or I'll be on with Coosa Valley Magazine and a whole lot more too, right here at TV47. Now TV47.TV on the internet, whatever device, you can watch us right there at TV47.TV. In Alabama, finding a place you and your family will love comes naturally at any one of our beautiful state parks where you can stay and play. Alabama state parks provide opportunities for adventure on the water, in the woods, and even just hanging around. Whether you want to explore the foothills of the Appalachians or wade into the warm waters of the Gulf, Alabama is a natural delight. To learn more, call 800 Alapark or visit alapark.com. Welcome back to the Library Connection. I'm Tracy Thomas, and today our guest is Mitzi Smith with Ribbons of Hope. And Mitzi, we've just been talking about, you know, how your personal story that you actually had a cancer diagnosis. You went through treatments, you came out so well from your um, diagnosis, and you got the idea to start Ribbons of Hope because you saw bills continue to pile up, some things don't always go well financially, and people do need some assistance. Um, we talked a little bit about your first fundraiser and some of the other things that you have, but we have some pictures that we wanted to show. 
and just give you an idea of, of how much work actually goes into this. Now this is a flyer um, for the strawberry sale that you've typically done around Valentine's Day yes. each year. And I know that I've seen the pictures on Facebook of how much work this is, but what a wonderful event. Yes, it is a tremendous amount of work and we can't do it without hundreds of volunteers. <laughs> but um, this year we'll be doing our cheesecakes. We'll decorate cheesecakes with strawberries and chocolate and sell the cheesecakes as our fundraiser for Valentine's Day this year. Now, if somebody sees this and says, okay, I think that would be a nice way to give back to Ribbons of Hope, support their organization, how could they get in touch with you to order those? We will have several volunteers with order forms, just like any other fundraiser out there. We'll have it on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, um, Ribbons of Hope Foundation, that we post everything that we're doing on. Um, they can just order from some of those people that have those order forms. So we'll be looking on Facebook then mm -hmm. for the Cheesecake Fundraiser. I've always loved to watch y'all do all those strawberries. So this is a picture, this is a tablescape, and um, this is a one that you did at Sycamore Baptist Church? Yes, this is our annual event. We do it every year. We're gonna do it this year in May. It's at Sycamore Baptist Church, and we have people volunteer to decorate each table, and then we sell the seats to those tables, and that is how we raise the funds, and our wonderful hospital donates all the food for us. So it's a good fundraising event. That's fantastic. Makes you proud to live in Sylacauga, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. When you see the kind of support that you get from your community. Now, if somebody looks at these pictures and says, you know, I would like to maybe come in and be a volunteer and help don uh, decorate one of these tables. Yes, they can. Anybody that wants to take on a table can. We'd love the help. <laughs> okay, and then you sell the seat, so that's another fundraiser that we'll be on the lookout for. Mm -hmm. How much do your tickets typically go for to these? Um, I think this year there was $22 a head. Now, do you do anything else this night in conjunction with this? Do you have an auction, or is this a dinner? This is just a dinner only, and we put on a little program. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. Now, we have one more picture that I wanted to show. It's um, actually, this is a, I just smiled when I saw this, this picture. So tell us about this. This is when we um, presented that $14,000 check to the UAB Comprehensive Cancer Center. And so it makes all the hard work you've done through tablescapes and strawberries and all that, it makes it worthwhile when you see how it helps people. That's right. I know it does. So you do a big auction every year. Yes. Tell us about the auction. We just finished it. It's every October. It is at Timber Ridge Golf Course. He lets us graciously hold it there. Um, but we usually have anywhere between 90 and 100 people attend it. And we usually have 100 or more items that we run. And I think we just made $16,000 off of it. That's fantastic in one evening. But mm -hmm. the work was going on for months for oh, that. Oh, months. Months. Tell us about the kind of things that you're looking to have donated. We will take anything we can get, but <laughs> <laughs> we would like um, higher ticket items that we can start bids out at $50 um, for our live auction. Anything less, we try to put it in a silent auction. But uh, TVs, gift cards, um, small appliances. Uh, we did the Cornhole Games, Alabama and Auburn. Mother and I decorate crafts and wreaths and Christmas decorations and stuff like that to sell in it. So just anything anybody can donate. So now you mentioned your mother. Could you do this without your mother? Oh Lord, no. I see her picture and everything <laughs> that you do and I just think how wonderful that she's right there supporting you. Yes, she's always been my caretaker even through everything else and she is the president of Ribbons of Hope. So now you had another fundraiser just recently and it was a motorcycle ride. Tell us about yes, that. Yes, it was our first motorcycle ride. Um, I think we had 50-something bikes, even though it rained on us that day. But they got to take, um, they did their ride, started in Sylacauga and in Leeds. It ended up at the Talladega Super Speedway where they got to take their bikes out on the track for two laps and get a photo opportunity in Victory Lane. And all those proceeds went to us too. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. How does it make you feel when you see all these people show up for fundraisers? Oh, it's just, you can't do it without them. You can't do it without the volunteers to help you put on the programs. You can't do it without the people that's coming to pay to sit at that program or ride in that program. It takes 
a village is what I keep saying, and I don't want to quote people, but <laughs> <laughs> we can't do it without all our volunteers. I understand. I remember the first time we ever did a t-shirt sale, and we saw the t-shirts all over town. I was so proud to live here because yeah. the way that people really do turn out for things. They really do. They do. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about another event that you've got coming up um, real soon here in town and maybe some more ways that you can participate. Becoming a driver can be an exciting time for a teen, but it can also be challenging and at very worst, deadly. Alabama ranks fifth in the number of teens killed in motor vehicle crashes every year. It's the leading cause of death among 16 to 24 year olds. Alabama's graduated driver license law places restrictions on young drivers to help ensure their safety. Parents, know the law, enforce the law, and be a good example. Remember, the life you save may be your child's. Hey, Silicaga, I'm Dr. Gina, and I want you to join me live every weeknight, Monday through Friday, right here on Channel 47 on the world's first social television show, and it's going to be all about you, whether it's presidential politics or deflate gate. If it's trending, we're going to be talking about it. I want you to join me live every Monday through Friday on Channel 47. Don't miss it. America Trends with Dr. Gina, Monday through Friday at 9 p.m., right here on Channel 47. See you then. Hey Birmingham, it's your favorite girlfriend Ebony Steele back in my hometown. My show, Coffee with America, is now on WOIL TV 47 four days a week. Catch me and Sasha Rianda Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 8 a.m. You can also see us Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. We're bringing you the latest in lifestyle, food, entertainment, you name it. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to the Library Connection. Today we're talking with Mitzi Smith with Ribbons of Hope and we've heard about um, your mission, your personal story. We've heard about some of the fundraisers that you do, fabulous fundraisers. And I just have to commend you because it takes a lot of creativity to come up with a fundraiser that's doable, that won't kill you trying to do <laughs> it, um, one that's going to help raise a lot of money towards your cause, and one that you get support from your community for. And not just people that come in and support the fundraiser, but volunteers that come in and help so much. So you've come up with some really, really great ideas for fundraisers. And you know, sometimes it's kind of a blessing and a curse once you get that momentum going and things are going really well. Um, sometimes it starts growing and you started out just serving Talladega County, correct? Correct. And I don't say that we so much grow. I just say that God blesses it. Mm -hmm. But yes, we were, um, Talladega County was sort of our pilot program. And St. Clair County, some people over there saw how well it was going for Talladega County. And they says, hey, can we start a charter over here in St. Clair? So they held some fundraisers to get their seed money started. And we've been helping patients now for the last seven or eight months in St. Clair County also. I don't think there's any bigger compliment than, a, than somebody to sit back and watch what you're doing and say, hey, that's going so well, we would like to do that over here, and to step up and offer to do the legwork and raise the money to help you grow. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. So now you've branched out, you're helping families, you're also supporting research, you've branched out into two counties now. Where do you see going from here? Um, we would like to eventually spread out to some other counties because we're constantly having people submit an application for us that are just right over that county line and we're having to turn them away. So we want to eventually get to the point where we don't have to turn anyone away. Now, I read a comment in one of these books and it said that a cancer diagnosis is a journey of unknown duration and destination. And they compared it to, you know, packing to go on this trip and you think you know where you're going, you've got life all planned out and then something like this happens and you realize they're sending you to a place that you didn't pack for. Maybe you packed summer clothes and you end up going to a winter place and you're totally not prepared, you don't have direction. Maybe they send you somewhere you don't speak the language. Do you agree with that? Yes, <clears throat> I just consider it as a bump in the road, whether it's cancer or MS or, because I have lots of friends that have other life debilitating diseases also. Mm -hmm. 
but it is a bump in the road and I just want people to know that there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Tomorrow is another day. Joy comes in the morning and that if you can just get through that day and try not to worry about the next day or the next destination and take it one day at a time, it's been the best advice that I can give someone. I think for me, when we hear that somebody has had, you know, something like this has happened, they've gotten a diagnosis, we always want to rush to their aid. And that's your first inclination is, what can I do right now for this person? How can I help them? What can I say? And I think sometimes it's better if we let them digest what yes. they've been told for a little while. So what can you give us some tips? Let's talk about that. What are some things that you can do if you know somebody? And like you said, maybe it's not just cancer. Maybe it's another type of diagnosis that's equally just as devastating. What are some ways that you've seen from your point of view and from working with these families, what are some ways that you can help somebody? What are things you can say? What are things that you can do? Um, the, the main thing I noticed, like on Facebook, because everybody's on Facebook, but someone will come out there and say that they found a tumor or something like that. And I've actually seen people comment, oh my God, you know, OMG. Mm -hmm. I was just like, please don't do stuff like that. They need your support. They don't, they have created the worst case scenario in their mind. They don't need anybody to help them. And then the internet has so much information on it, but then that can be overwhelming. And so I advise anyone going through it to just do not do the research. I did the research. I worried myself sick at the stuff I was reading. None of that stuff ended up happening to me. I did it all for nothing. I got myself upset for nothing. My doctor the whole way was just like, would you just let me do my job? <laughs> <laughs> so just let your doctors do their job. They know much more than you do. <laughs> I think that's a, a very good point too. Something that we, we talked about earlier was about what information is available on the internet and that there is so much out there. So much of it is not always reliable. And uh, one of the things that we were real um, proud of with the library was that the Alabama Virtual Library tries to collect databases of information, different subjects, different topics that are credible information. And one of the databases that they subscribe to is Medline. And so when you're searching and you need trustworthy information, yes. there is something through the Alabama Virtual Library. If anybody's interested, they could contact the library. We could tell them how to get on that. But Medline, I noticed today when I clicked on it and looked, their topic of the day was colon cancer. So they do topics of the day, what are some drugs, what are some therapies. And um, so I, I understand what you're saying about it's always not best to get online and start searching. So what are some other ways, things that you think that somebody might could do for somebody if they know that they're sick or in need? Um, the main thing is like some of the families have to just move up to UAB or the Children's Hospital and stuff. And so if you could handle things for them at home for them, whether it's collecting their mail or whatever, and then when they are home and they are sick, if you could just bring food by, I recommend that you not take spicy foods by okay. because that does not agree with you when you're going through chemotherapy therapy. So um, meals is a big help. Running errands for people is a big help. But just to let people know that you're there when they are ready. I know one of the things for our family in particular, um, when we went through something similar, um, people would come by and they would do things for our child. Um, we had Taylor and um, of course our other child was sick and people would come by and they would pick Taylor up and they would do things with him because sometimes I think we forget that there are other members of the family yeah. that are maybe not directly involved with that person's care and they still need attention, they still need things. He they still have needed, a life. They, he still had a life and needed <laughs> some recreation. So yeah. um, that's one of the things that people can certainly do is um, not just for the person that's sick but for the other people in the family. That's right. So. Now, you do have another event that's coming up um, pretty soon. So you just finished your auction. Yes. So what's next on your list? Um, there's a thing at the Comer Museum. I think it's the fourth. Uh, Karen Allen is coming to talk about her book, and they're going to have a Ribbons of Hope booth there for people to make donations. And we have a cookbook out that people can purchase, and they're going to have some of our cookbooks at it. 
Um, and tell us about Karen. Now, she's local, correct? Yes. Okay, she's a local author. So that's a great event coming up, great way to support Ribbons of Hope. And before we, before we go, we have two or three minutes left. Tell us a couple of the stories that are your most memorable things or maybe the, maybe the ones that stand out in your mind the most that you're the proudest of the impact you were able to make through Ribbons um, of Hope. Okay, we had one gentleman from Sylacauga that um, had prostate cancer and needed to start his radiation treatments. And the hospital needed his full major medical deductible up front before they could start his treatments. And it was $800 and he didn't have it. So he basically just went home to not get the treatment. And about three weeks later, someone heard and got him in touch with the hospital that let him know about us. He was one of our first patients, so our name hadn't gotten out there as well then. But anyway, they put him in contact with us and we paid that major medical deductible. He started his radiation treatments. And it's almost one of those situations where you're focused on helping the families with cancer diagnosis, but then you start seeing things with insurance and it almost makes you want to branch off in another direction and start fighting for another cause, but you've got to stay focused. So. That's right. <laughs> so tell us, I know that, and we won't mention any names, but I know that there have been children locally, Yes. Um, which I know helped shape your uh, donation to work with children's cancer research. Tell us about a few of the children locally that you've been able to to work with. Um, most of our children are still going through it to one degree or another, whether they're finished their chemo and now they're having problems with their kidneys because of the chemo or they're currently in treatment right now. And I don't like to single out anything because they're our most wider known mm -hmm. patients and uh, for their privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but we do, we help those patients. I mean, we, there's no age limit. Cancer does not discriminate. We do not discriminate in who we help. Um, we I have know you get real attached to the families, don't you? Yes. You do. And you want them to succeed. I mean, you know, you want them, you just root them on to let them know there is someone out there that's got your back. Well, now, um, one final thought before we go. You are a 501c3 yes. tax deductible organization. So people can also do um, just honor gifts in honor of somebody. Tell us just a little bit about that, if they wanted to make a donation in honor or in memory of somebody. Um, a lot of times when there's a funeral, um, people will request in lieu of flowers that you make a donation to Ribbons of Hope. So we have that whole program that you can send checks in in memory of, and we will send them cards to let them know that person thought of them in that way. All right, so you can see why we're fascinated with what she's done. She's just taken something that could have been just a nightmare for some families and she's turned it into such a positive thing. And we're proud of you. We're proud of Ribbons of Hope and that you're here in Talladega County and St. Clair County too. And we just want to thank you so much, Mitzi, for coming on today and being with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us today on the Library Connection.